Today we'll learn how to do web scraping on Amazon Best Booksellers website and automate creating datasets. There are different ways to do this, but the one I'm gonna show you involves a beautiful soup. So first, let's go to the website that we wanna scrape. So in Google, I look for amazon.com best book sellers. Then for the results, I click on the first one. Which okay, so this is the website. Now, what do we want to do over here? We want to get the information about the books that are over here. So we want to see the ranking of each book, what's the name of the book, who is the author, and what's the price for each book. And then we want to grab this data and save it into a CSV file. So that's the file we want to build. So here it is. We have a column for rank, which is the ranking of each book, the title of the books, a column for the author, and a column for the price. So we see how to make this data set. So let's go to Visual Studio and write the code. So here first we should install the Python libraries that we want. So I open a new terminal. Okay. So I do pip install beautiful soup 4 and then I hit enter to install. Well I already have this library so nothing happens again. And then I also do pip install requests. So we want requests to grab the HTML data of the website. Now after installing this library, I create a new file. I call it bs-amazon.py. Here's our Python file. So we start coding. First I start by writing from bs4 import beautiful soup with capital B and capital S and also I import the request module now the first thing we should do we should start getting the HTML code of the website and over here we need to first bring the URL of the web page we want to scrape so now I go to my browser to copy the URL address of the website over here I have to exit full screen and then grab the URL and then paste it into my Python file. Then to have access to Amazon website data, we need to somehow trick the website to think we it's a human that is getting access to the website, not a Python script. Otherwise we cannot get up the data from the website. So to do the trick, I make the headers dictionary. Then I set the key of user dash agent. And then I need to get user agent property of my browser. So I go back to my browser, open a new page, and you can just simply look for what is my user agent. Then Google returns the result. So I just copy paste my user agent and put it in my dictionary. Now we have our headers, then I write page equal to requests dot get, pass over here URL, and then headers equal to headers. I see I have a type over here, headers. Okay, now that we have our page object I make a soup object from beautiful soup library so I write beautiful soup pass over here page dot content and then we also as a second property pass HTML dot parser okay so now if I just print soup dot prettyfy we should get the HTML code of the website. It's gonna be a bit messy, but at least we'll make sure that everything is working. Okay, great. So now we have the HTML code. I remove this line. Now we start getting our data. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna get all the books. So get all books. 
over here I write books equal to from soup find underscore all now over here we need to pass which element from the HTML code we want to grab so let's first go to the website to see what we want to do over here in the website I can just right click on one of the books and then down here press inspect so what it does it gives me the HTML code of this website and I can simply see every code is related to which part of the web page so for example if I over here on the left corner I take this select an element and hover over any HTML element I can see the code down here so when we check the website we see that it's a grid over here now if I just select one grid then over here I see this grid item is related to one book so we can use this information and pass the ID equal to grid item root to our code to get the every book on this web page so I go to this over here and ID equal to grid item root so now books is related to all the information from all the books on this web page so for example if I just print the first element of over here it's gonna give me the information of the first book when I run the code what we see we see a HTML code from the first book of course it's a bit messy we have to grab the information from this code but at least we are in the right direction so let's go back to this code over here from now on just to see what we are exactly doing I write book equal to books the first element of this list so this way I will just have the information from the first book and we can easily see what's happening over here then later on I'll modify the code in order to get the information of all the books so now let's see what information we actually want to extract into our data set if I go again to the data set so first thing we want is the rank of each book so let's go back again to the website now again I click over here to select an element and I go for this rank one what I see over here it's a span element and its class is equal to ZG badge text and that's the information I'll use to get the rank of the book so I copy the class and then I go to the Python code now over here I write rank equal to book dot find and pass over here a span because that's the element I'm considering and then I specify the class of the element that I want so I write class underscore equal to and then paste the information I copied so this way we can get the rank and let's print it out I print rank so we see over here I got the HTML element that I wanted so it's a span element with the class I defined and over here we have the rank but we need to get the rank of the book so what I'll do is over here when I'm getting the rank of the book I add dot text in order to get the text attributes again if I run the code now over here we should get the rank which is here but I don't want this hash sign so I want to remove it so the way I do it I specify when I'm returning the text it should be from the first element and this way I will only get the rank of the book which is one and here it is okay that's great so now we got the rank the next information is the title of each book so we again go back to the website unfortunately getting the information for the title of the book isn't as easy as rank so the reason is if we again select the element which is regarding for the title what we have is a div tag it has a really complicated class name but if we compare this class let's say with also the class related to the title of the fourth book so what we see over here we have a different class so this tells us we cannot use the class attribute to obtain the information for all the books because it's changing but how we can solve this let's again check out the HTML code of the first book 
We see if we consider this div element, which is related to the face out of each book. And then inside of this element, there are six children nodes. So one is related to the image of each book. We see it over here. Then the second one is related to the title and so on and so forth. So the strategy we can use to get the information we want is this way. First, I will select this div element, which is uh, containing all the information that I want. And then inside of this div element, again, there is another div element, which is the child node. And then inside of this child node, we have all the information that we want. So what I'll do is to select this div child node. So let's do that. I first copy the class of the parent node. And then over here, I write children equal to book.find div element and then its class is equal to the information I got. So with this code, what it happens is like I get the information for the parent node, but I want its child node, which is again another div element. How I can do this? I can go back to my code and at the end of the code write dot div. So now let's print out this children node that we got and see what we have over here. Still it's a bit messy, but we are definitely in the right direction. So what I will do next, I'll go to the website and now I want to get the information for the title of the book. So now remember over here, we have all the HTML code for this div tag. What we want to do, we want to get the information from its children node. How we can do that? We can just write children.contents and then pass over here the number of the element that we want to get information. So for example, if I write zero, I'll get the information from the first child node. If I write one, it gives me the second node and so on and so forth. Now, if I check the information of the title is not in the first node, but it's in the second child node. Because if I open the second child node, I hover over here and then I see that the title is highlighted. So that's where my information is. So I need to get the information from the second child node, which becomes contents one. So what I write is title equal to this element. Now, if I just print this title, I get the HTML code that has title inside. So now how we can get the title, we go back to the code. And when we are getting title, we just write that text. Now I run the code, we should get the title of the book. Here it is. Perfect. So now we have the title. What's the next one? The next one is the author of the book. Let's go back to the website again. Now for the title, we had the information in the second child node, but for the author, it's in the third child node. Because again, if I hover over here, the author name is highlighted. So it's inside the third child node. If we just count one, two, three. So let's go back to the Python call and get the information for the author. Now over here, I can just simply copy my code and then I write author equal to children.contents, the third child node, which becomes number two over here, dot text. Now again, if I print the author, I should get the information for the author. And here it is. So that's great. Now the last one is the information for the price of the book. Again, we go back to the website. And again, over here, if we check the children nodes, we see the prices in the last one. So let's go back to the Python file and get the price information. Now I copy again my code for author. I write price equal to children.contents. Now to get the information for the last node, I just write over here minus one. And that's how I get the information for the price. Now, if I print the price, we should get the price of the book. And here it is. So now we have all the information we want for one book. 
Now we need to modify the code to get the information of all the books, not just one. So I go back to the Python code. Instead of writing book equal to books, I need to iterate over all books. So what I'll do, I write for book in books. And then I bring all the codes that I have inside of this for loop. So now this way I get the information of each book and then find its rank, title, author, and price. So now what's left is just to write all this information into a CSV file and create our dataset. So let's go and import the library that we need, which is import CSV. So we are going to use this module to write the information into a CSV file. Now let's check out the CSV file to see how we want the final data set to look like. So over here, we first have a row that gives the name of the each column, which is rank, title, author, and price. And then we're going to save all the information in the following rows. So first we should create the first row. So let's go back to the Python file. Over here, before the for loop, I add new lines in order to make the first line of my CSV code. So I write CSV underscore headers, and it's a list of the name of the column. The first one is rank. The second one is title. Then we have author. And then in the end, price. Then in order to write the first row, first I open my CSV file with open. Then I write the name of the file. I'll call it Amazon underline books.csv. So the second argument, I should define what I want to do with this CSV file. I want to write into it. So I write W. Then I write encoding equal to UTF slash eight. And in the end, I write new line equal to an empty string. So I specify encoding. If we want to work with non ASCII characters, we don't uh, encounter any problem. And then I specify the new line property like this to avoid having empty lines between each row that I'm adding to this data list. Now I open my file and I call it as F, which stands for file. Then I create a writer instant, which is CSV dot writer and I specify I want to write into my file over here. And lastly, I should write my headers into the CSV file. So I write writer dot write row and pass over here CSV headers. So this way we write the first line of our data set. So what's left is just writing the information of the books into the data set. To do that, I just copy this part of the code. And over here, I remove this print and then paste the code over here. So first I take care of these codes. Okay. So now what we want to happen every time we are reading a book and we get this information, which is rank, title, author, and price. We want to write a new row into our CSV file and put the information into the data set. In order to do this, again, I open my Amazon book CSV file. Instead of writing to this file, now I want to append a new row. So I, instead of W, I write A. And then down here, when I'm writing the row, instead of passing CS headers, I make a new list and I pass over here rank, title, author, and price. Now let's look at the list of the files that we have over here. When I run the code, I should have now a new CSV file that has all the information. Here it is. So let's check out the file. That's exactly all the information we wanted into our file. So the first row specifies the name of each column. The first column is the rank of the books. The second one is the title of each book. Then we have the author and the price. So that's how we can grab the information from Amazon best booksellers website and then save it into a CSV file using the beautiful soup module. I hope this was useful and you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you later. Today we'll learn how to do web scraping on Amazon best booksellers website. What?